Hey guys, welcome to our devotional series that we've been walking through called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Today we're going to be talking about how hurry is incompatible with peace. It is fairly obvious that peace is incompatible with hurry. If you don't believe me, next time you're running late to catch a flight or 10 minutes late for an appointment or overdue on an assignment, take an interior inventory and see if you don't feel the deep peace of God in your soul? Do you sense a grounded, present sense of calm or something else? And yet we continue to cram more and more into our already overfull lives, forcing us to speed up to a frantic pace and rarely slow down long enough to experience God's peace. Of course, not all busyness is bad. There is a kind of busyness that means you're not wasting your precious life on trivial things. The problem isn't having a lot to do. It is having too much to do, where the only way to cram it all in is to kick into hurry gear and as a tragic result, slip out of love, joy, and peace. In our culture, slow is not acceptable. When someone has a low IQ, we dub them slow. When service at a restaurant is lousy, we call it slow. When a movie is boring, again, we complain and say that it's slow. Case in point, Merriam-Webster defines it as mentally dull, naturally inherent or sluggish, lacking in readiness, promptness, or willingness. The message is clear. Slow is bad, fast is good. But in the upside down kingdom, our value system is turned on its head. Hurry is of the devil, slow is of Jesus, because Jesus is what love, joy, and peace look like in the flesh and blood. Today's exercise is to have a moment of quiet. Take a few moments, ideally at the beginning of your day or whatever works best for you, and simply do nothing. Just be you. Stand in silent love before God. Sit there long enough for the peace of his spirit to well up inside your body and thank him for it. We're going to read through a couple of passages today. Um, the first one is John 14, 22 through 27, which says, Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not um, my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all these things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The last passage we're reading today comes out of Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for an opportunity to stop, to realize that everything that needs to get done will always get done, God, but that you have given us this moment to be present, to be still, and to thank you for the lives that we get to live. I pray that you give us moments today, God, to slow down, to experience your peace, and to help us unhurry. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for our final day.